Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I move uh, Senate Bill uh, 289, uh, also passes amended with an amendment uh, 2012-2169H, which I, will, I have copies here to hand out. They haven't already been handed out. I just don't know whether they're in the back of the front of you. Okay, before we move on, do we need a second? Okay, this is a amendment that has some minor changes. Uh, I'm not sure if people have this yet, so I, I can um, yeah, please uh, pass them. In the this is 2012-2169H. If everyone has the amendment now, um, Representative Smith can report on the subcommittee's recommendations and explain this amendment. Yes. The, um, the uh, subcommittee voted uh, four to one to recommend this to the committee. This is Mr. Oxfass as an amendment. Uh, it is um, uh, the particular bill, the amendment you have, it corrects it. Uh, a couple of minor changes from, and these were discussed in committee. Um, we have uh, we changed the list of sponsors in the bill. We corrected a. Uh, I can't find a sheet with the changes, but I we corrected a. Um, Um, 
the place. Education on page four. Is that on page four? Thank you. Uh, it is. Uh, it had to do with posting. Thank you, posting. I guess it's page. Uh, oh, here it is. I was looking at the wrong page. I was looking at page four. Page six, line 24. The, the uh, sentence saying no authorized notice of these requirements shall be permitted to be displayed outside of the polling place. The only substantive uh, change is this last change, and I want to address that so that we put ourselves on the basis of the previous amendment which we had the, the hearing on. And that was, uh, uh, and that was concern raised uh, in committee about the First Amendment implications of uh, restricting speech outside of the uh, polling area. So it was uh, it, that was, uh, was was struck for those reasons. Uh, Views as being vague and possibly challenging. Those were the uh, changes from the previous uh, amendment. And now I'd like to address the changes of the amendment. This is the, uh, the on that piece of paper now, since I lost it. And I apologize, I was in session all morning. Basically, the committee felt it was, it was crucial to uh, fix several things in the voting system that were not included in the Senate Bill 289. Uh, there was concern that there was fraud uh, that we are at least subject to. Uh, and one of the, uh, the fixes was on the, the first page. Change the requirement to announce your name and, and address as part of the, uh, as the, as the introductory announcement. Uh, was, uh, the, that first paragraph on, on page one on line five uh, was to uh, to uh, permit the, the 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 require that the that the address be first stated by the person wanting to vote, rather than have the clerk state the address first. And that has uh, enabled us to have one more check of if the person is who they say they were. And they also has the change of domicile. If there's a change of domicile, it puts in a procedure to make that happen. Uh, the um, the, the uh, next significant change is the set of ID that was uh, deemed accept acceptable, was restricted, and it changed somewhat and restricted from the uh, previous uh, Senate bill. Uh, 289 that uh, the drive, any driver's license from any driver's license from any state was, was is acceptable where that was not there was only New Hampshire in the original Senate bill although there was a uh, a line of acceptance that was which is any uh, any uh, federal state or, um, or uh, county or municipal that would be accepted uh, we also the original bill had no expiration on the new entry driver's license, and we had a, 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 a five-year period for expiration. Uh, we also accept um, uh, U.S. passports. We're now on, we're now on page two, uh, lines 29 and down. You can do a driver's license by any state of the federal government, identification card, U.S. Uh, armed services identification by a U.S. passport and qualifying material. And we uh, omitted student ID that was in the original Senate bill, and we omitted uh, any other photo ID determined to be legitimate. We felt that that was too, sub too uncertain to be able to actually be proof of identification. Uh, 
uh, we uh, changed the affidavit to be signed to being a challenged voter affidavit. If the, if the individual does not have their license, they will still be able to photo uh, their identification. They will still be able to vote, uh, but they will have to fill out a voter uh, uh, valid qualified voter uh, affidavit rather than a challenged voter affidavit. There were changes in the uh, numbers of days allowed by the secretary for the Secretary of State to mail letters in cases where there seems to be uh, when, when those affidavits needed to be signed, and that was re reduced from 90 days to 60 days. And that is on page um, three, line eight. Uh, and the response 90 days to 30 days, which is in the same page, line 13. The, uh, on, on, on page 2, line 30, I'm sorry, no, the, uh, the um, Secretary of State shall compile a report after, after uh, general election is what's stated in Senate Bill 289, and is that been changed to any election after November 1st, 2012. The uh, Voter ID Advisory Committee uh, on page four was changed, the principles were changed from being the principal to the added the word or designee, allowing the Secretary of State to have a designee on it, President of the Senate, a designee, and so forth. Um, there would be no affidavit, uh, in the Senate bill there would be no affidavit required until uh, January 13. In this bill, in the eligibility state, we, we have the, for the primary, uh, the voter, uh, photo ID would be asked for, but if not available, would be uh, the, the moderator could allow the person to go through, but uh, uh, in the primary, you can uh, be allowed to vote. Uh, and then in the general, the moderator could allow the person to go through. And the effective date was made immediate well than 60 days after passing. Those are the primary changes uh, to the original Senate. Okay, discussion. Yes, yes. Uh, we, you know, this is just as it was presented. We didn't feel that that, 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 that there was actual confusion that it was, it was clear. That the, that the writer had been, that the, that the, that the uh, legislative services had been instructed to put the proper language to make what we wanted to have happen, and it appears that that's correct. Okay. In terms of the effective date, what would take place in September is essentially the same in, in both the Senate bill as amended and this amendment. In, in the September election, people under either version would just simply be asked for a voter ID, uh, and, 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 but not required to have it, not required to sign an affidavit. It was really part of the educational portion of this implementation where people would be advised that in the next, at least under, under this amendment, uh, in, in November, under the next election, they would have to show it. So in September, things would be pretty much the same under either bill or either amendment. Uh, however, the difference is the full Im implementation of the, the sentence version would not take place until January 1st. And this one takes place uh, beginning of November, November 2nd, or after November 1st. Mr. Chairman. Representative Cody. A couple questions for Representative Smith. And the first one is, uh, if that's OK. Yes, please. Uh, page 2, line 30. I presume that is intended to refer, I'm sorry, I don't have RSA 260 in front of me. I presume that is intended to refer to non-driver identification cards. Line 28. Line 30 and 31 on page 2. Uh, the U.S. Armed Services Identification Card? No, the DMV. Oh, line 28. Okay. Yes, that is the, uh, the non-driver uh, DMV. 
Right. And the second question is why uh, were student IDs removed in, in this event? Uh, it was uh, such a big uh, and easily reproducible but in, uh, in back offices identification that we felt it didn't provide valid proof of who you are. You show a picture and a name, but that would not be the, 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 uh, the variety of such uh, student cards and their rather informal way that they're handed out uh, would not provide uh, any protection really against um, someone voting who is not really said to What was, the, what was the evidence that they're easily, or however you describe, what was, what was the evidence behind those conclusions? Uh, we, we did talk to three of the state universities who indicated that they would not use their, their, uh, ident their identification cards for any purposes other than their students uh, being on campus. Uh, it was, they were not, uh, not screened. There was evidence that uh, you could get one, in fact, and there's testimony that you could get a, such a card uh, merely by going by walking and saying you're John Jones and and, uh, and they take your picture and you just say you lost your card and your name is John Jones and they give you a picture and you put it on the card and there you are. So it's uh, it's totally uh, bereft of any uh, serious attempt to match face with name. So the universities are saying that their own cards are not sufficient proof of identity? Not, not useful for identification purposes. They do it for student identity, to allow students to pass an account campus at a different level of criteria. They may use, uh, they, they, they may for something, now these are my words, not the university words, uh, but um, uh, that they would presume that no one would come in and ask for a student ID card unless they were a student and they needed it for the library or you know, active or something. Is that only is applicable to the university system over here? Or any university in the state. I we we checked with three universities. Well, the University well, of New Hampshire, T and Plymouth State, and they all had the same reaction that this was not a it was not a good idea. Well I was thinking in terms of the University of Southern New Hampshire and Dartmouth and we didn't check those. They're private. Can I just clarify something? The um Universities that you checked with said that student IDs were not appropriate for voting purposes? Or no, we did not ask them for voting purposes specifically. We asked them for identification purposes. So they're, I mean, I'm a little confused. They're, they're issuing student ID cards, which are obviously for identification purposes, but as a student, for lack of a better term, that's what they're called. But they're saying they're not adequate for those purposes? They said that they, would, they expected students for any place where you really needed identification to use driver's license or other identification. I guess I'm not following you. They're, they're called student IDs. They're for the purpose of identifying students on campus. That, that far I'm with you. But for what purpose then are they? If, if, if they didn't say anything about their suitability for voting purposes, and they've said that they're not suitable for other purposes other than identifying a student on campus, then how could they be suitable for identifying a student on campus? I can't answer that Thank you. 
student population is not mine. It's possible that you have a lot of students you know, in line signing, signing these affidavits. By eliminating the student ID card. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. That was not incidentally the, 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 the uh, information we received from talking to people from the student guard companies. They were leading us down the road that they thought yes, most students had some valid kind of identification. Um, we also struck the code of identification deemed by the election officials as legitimate proof of identity. Why did you strike that? Uh, that was right. Again, our intention was to make sure that there was some security to the bar. It, was, uh, it, it wasn't the security level, and certainly admittedly not the security level that we take in order to make sure underage people drink. But uh, we wanted to have as much security as we could get, and uh, and that uh, and that seemed to be very difficult for about for to make any judgments on, on such cards, and they're, they could easily be from not actually providing identification, that's true. And so if there's a, like if I, I'll go back to, to my, my polling place, a significant part of the population are, are doctor students. And if the moderator in my town says doctor student IDs, Sufficiently free identity, she's not allowed to make that decision. Uh, she, in the general election, uh, is permitted to, or he or she is permitted to allow anyone that, that she perceives, <coughs> but the decision based on the identification uh, is not up to her. These are the ones that are listed. And the ballot and the, and the, the uh, escape ballot is the. the uh, how do, you, how do you reconcile the differences between the standards and the registration statute and the attaining the ballot statute? Uh, there are different processes. And the um, registration is for the purpose of allowing the person to vote, and the other one is to prove that you are the person who is registered. Uh, proving that means that not only that you have a picture and a name, but that, that that's likely very highly probable that that is in fact the picture of the person that you, uh, uh, that you uh, say you are. And uh, so this this isn't entirely an identification issue. I think the registration statute is as well. Certainly. If the person's registered, you assume that person can vote. All you need to do is prove you are the person. And if that doesn't mean any any picture with any name, it means a picture with a name that has uh, a, an understand and control process to get those two done. Now, that doesn't mean there can't be frauds. And in fact, we know there are frauds, but there's a there's a line that has to be drawn at some point to decide which ones are going to accept. And the subcommittee recommends it all. With the exception of the model allowed on personal knowledge. So, if the supervisor is deemed a voter identification legitimate, the person is allowed to enter into the system via the registration. And then they take that same photo ID over to the ballot part to get their ballot. And the ballot part cannot accept that ID. So they prove their identity in one part of the room, but they can't in the other part. In of the most cases where you've shown, you've shown to the to register on day, day of photo registration, as you were referring to, uh, in, the, in that day that you show your identification, if that it doesn't fit the, the proof, of, of who you are, then you put on the application. So the supervisor is accepted at this point. Yes. Uh, so they had accepted it. They said, then you are who you say you are. Bring this over to get your ballot. The ballot clerk says, this doesn't prove you say you are, but I'm not allowed to accept it. That's right. the same document. Now you would have to swear that you are who you say you are. Well, yeah, that, that is a, a remedy. Which is not required in the registration. Right, but, it's a, but that's a remedy to a problem. The problem being that you're not allowing the same ID to serve the same purpose. That's right. 
to the verification, then the voter has to sign the affidavit. And the so, challenger, yeah. I believe the problem, the issue was that it was making it into the view of uh, many uh, too easy to challenge. And you might find people who would be routinely challenged. So that now what was not changed is the requirements on the challenger because and nor is that changed here. So if, you, if a challenger, this preserves the right of the challenger to challenge. However, they still would have to do whatever RSA 659.27 requires, which, uh, which uh, uh, presumably is the same instructions that uh, uh, that uh, you have to do today. Yes, not sure. Um, it says any person authorized to challenge under 659.27. 6927 defines who makes the statute that requires the challenger to fill out the um, the affidavit requires them to present evidence. I, I apologize. I just took these these words out of the Central 289. Right. So, so the situation could be that someone could object to the verification without any evidence, without any sustaining any reason why. And then you require that voter to have it to give the affidavit. Just like first you one would in the chamber. Same thing. Um, yes. Um, page 3, line 31, you're reinstating the uh, photograph. The photograph provision has been changed from what was in the Senate bill originally, the original Senate bill, before it was amended in the Senate, which was an electronic device 
this would take a back and require a privilege locally to put a physical photograph and be appended to that data and the photograph equipment was not a good one. But the same relevant things to have shall provide the photography equipment if, the, uh, if, if an issue arises in terms of not being able to use the HAVA funds, then the legislature would have to appropriate money you know, from some other source. I, I think that really is probably... Yeah, and so, so and that was my follow-up, is that yeah. so the is going to come out of the general fund. If, if it came out and if we, and if we were just decided to do that, that would be a separate process. If the assumption is it comes out of the HAVA Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Representative Smith, uh, page three, the, the same camera section. What is the basis for waiving the, the competitive bid process? Uh, the, 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 that it is not a significant, the, the number of dollars is not, is not significant, and the time frame available to achieve the, the, um, uh, the uh, get the, the photograph equipment is short because the timing between now and the general election is short. So, and that process is a rather lengthy process. So the trade-off between time and possibility of saving a few dollars is not 
something that we felt was appropriate, and we put in that the, you have to still get the approval of the fiscal committee uh, so that we go to the fiscal committee, which is an expedited process. Uh -huh. Yes. So the Secretary of State would it be the responsibility of the Secretary of State to just go out and buy the equipment. They, they, they wouldn't be required to seek any form of competitive, competitive pricing either. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Sorry? With approval of the fiscal committee. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, this is not a case of a fish. My inspection of the person is 60. The person members of the committee order doesn't mean. But my inspection and agent refers to the clerk's association for his or her representative. Yeah. That intended to be a distinction made there? It was only made because that was the original language in the Senate bill, and I saw no reason to change it. Uh, that the designee was just added, it was not intended to be a difference between oh, the language. Yeah. So, why, so why did you change it? I'm in charge, so you know these things get it. Uh, I, jump out at me, so. I, I understand. Uh, I apologize. We were trying to make a few changes to be in the We weren't trying to. You weren't. I, 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 I was not trying, trying to create a problem with uh, the question of why it would be changed from or his or her representative to designee because I think this is an interchangeable thing. And I, like I said, I would think that it would be if I just was wanting to show an affirmative decision to use a term. Um, on page four, sorry, on line, line 29. Um, this is the education requirement um, for, this, for this bill. And did the, did the subcommittee um, review the court cases on the education aspect of the study? Since we've had the procedure that you could sign the affidavit, that it was unnecessary to have that statement on there because indeed no one was going to ask since you could be a registered form and it would be faster to do that than go in and ask the card to put it up in the So it, it wasn't a substantive issue. It's also worth noting that the criteria is pointed out uh, that this bill fully meets that uh, under this legislation, all votes will be counted and they will be turned away. Yeah. There, there is no circumstance if this bill doesn't look right. There's no circumstance in which somebody will be disenfranchised. I was asking a very specific question about <coughs> the language. I think 356 also had the ability to execute an affidavit, but yet the committee determined 
necessary to include that language. You know, what you're saying is that because of that option, no one can really get into something different. How do I get enhanced to require to be more of a different group of identity? Without education, without traditional teachings. Likely or not, sorry, that's a voter would know to say, don't have to If a, an errant moderator or child clerk says, you need know, you your ID, and he says, well, I found my car or I left it at home, the child clerk says, well, you have to go get it. Well, I, I would assume, first of all, that you're being
about the group of identities that should be posted has no efficacy yet. The voter never sees it. So, in the given the not in the advantage, well, not only including one name of the Secretary of State office, uh, it would seem to be logical that they that the moderators would be informed of, of their what to watch out for that. To put it in the law, I think it is the place that the law in a sense on that. Here is one primary option. 
and then it goes in the toilet back to the general. Did the Secretary of State comment on that? Yes, the Secretary of State said this would be a very tight um, interval of time. So, I should we consider it? No, we considered it and we weighed the importance of this election and making sure that everyone has, has the right to vote conveniently and everyone is the person who the right to vote is the person who has the right to vote is in fact voting. And those are those are the, the trade-offs uh, and uh, we uh, we thought that it would be worthwhile to request that the Secretary of State do get the education necessary and, and out from the hands in time for the election. And we do have, a, 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 albeit a, a short interval, but to soft, the soft interval that is the primary, uh, and that that was a reasonable trade off. The turnout in a primary and state primary in September is a fraction of the turnout in general. Um, and so those who are subjected to the application requirements to this one, this chosen period is one, is only a fraction of the electorate. And so people are going to show up at the general having uh, no benefit of that phase and period with I think that we, we explicitly spent time on that issue, which is the importance of having this in position for the general election, which we concluded in that trade off. That, uh, not, uh, that the trade off was that we should, uh, we should have it in place. I wasn't a public hearing at a doctor's appointment in May for a month and a half. Um, the, I understand the clerks were in support of 289 coming over from the Senate, but they're opposed to this. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that's correct. I haven't seen anything in writing. Is, is that correct? Yeah, they, they, they oppose this because it adds to the workload and I think it's it would be difficult. It to actually go through the process to, uh, to take on these all these requirements in addition to the normal in this did the subcommittee take that into account? Yeah, they did. What what was its how did it come out to the conclusion? Again, the uh, the subcommittee felt that proper education of clerks or this it really depends on what your expectation of the number of people going to the registration the, the affidavit process. If the if that number is a very large number of uh, if it's uh, if it's most people have OLD, if it's the informal information we unfortunately do not have we do know that there are more driver's license and non driver's license than there are people in, in the state of New Hampshire. So we we inferred from that that uh, probably there's not going to be a high uh, load of people taking uh, photo ID uh, and having to take the uh, affidavit for it. Uh, and, uh, and that's, I think mean, that's the case, and clearly there is a significant load. That's a, that's a, a judgment. So you disagree with the clerk's yes. judgment on that issue? And I know the Secretary of State's office was here at the hearing. Um, I don't think they took a position on the bill, but they were testifying generally in favor of us. So I thought that as it came up in the Senate, it was a good bill. Um, and I, again, I thought you had to educate me because I wasn't here. What was their testimony? Did they testify? He testified, uh, the deputy uh, Scanlon testified and said he, his concern with this bill was primarily associated with the timing and getting the rating. Did the, did the subcommittee take into account those concerns and how they address them? I thought you asked that question before, but yes, uh, we, we, we made the trade off between the importance of having identification to this election uh, and photo identification vis a vis uh, the, the strain that that might place on the, on the Secretary of State to make it happen in time and, and in a quality manner. And, 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, bringing up this time limit, I, I uh, wanted to do as a co sponsor, but I, from the very beginning I did have a question and concern about this time and about the Georgia uh, time limit that basically, as I understand it, threw the whole thing out. Since uh, I guess it was Tuesday, it was four days ago, but it was Tuesday, and we had our meeting. Has anybody had a chance to see what that time limit was and whether this would correspond or uh, conflict or be in agreement with the Georgia when they finally did accept this uh, bill? No, the answer is no. No. Thank you. Uh, question. Um, I'm really confused about page five on the amendment regarding voter identification. I really want to know um, why does the uh, Roman numeral five, line 11, the fee for such card shall be $10 and is not refundable, except that no fee shall be charged to any person who, for reason of age or health, turns in his or her driver license before the expiration date of such license. For purpose of this section, reason of age shall be deemed to apply only to those persons over 65. Can you explain that to me? Yes. What we're doing is we're changing the existing statute, RSA 26021, which gives the, 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 the state has a generic capability of, of, of creating um, non-driver IDs that are already exist in the statute. And right now, that applies to what, that, that's in current law. What we're adding is that for photo identification for voting basis, that that ten dollars we will have a voucher to waive that ten dollars. So the, the 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 first sentence that you, you read and and so the first two sentences you read are in the existing statute and they have to do with the current procedure for it's a ten dollar fee and that you it's it's intended for certain people who don't have driver's license. Okay, but what what about the age of sixty five? What is that pertaining to? Uh, I... 13, 14. 13, 14. Oh, oh, uh, yes, I have some. That the, uh, I think the, the idea is if you're over age 65, because that may, you may have given up, well, for whatever reason, uh, that you now have the $10 fee does not charge, which is not wrong. What about homeless persons? Is that the, is I, that the I did not try to reopen the issue associated with the non-voting use what we've made is changes in order to specifically address photo identification for voting purposes and make that free. And so we didn't ask the question about what other possibilities we might want to make for the Well, may I follow up? Yes. Um, I'm really concerned about that because if a homeless person you know, can have you know, a tent on the Merrimack and that be their domicile, they need a photo ID in order to vote. So they would not qualify for getting a free voter ID. Uh, they would because they would they would be have to put under domicile address. They would have to put that where they where they are. I mean, what bridge do they sleep? Who's custom? Quite another question for you, if I may. Mr. Chair, yeah. Mr. Chair, sorry, <laughs> Mr. Chair. Uh, you know what does it for the DMV in order to get an, a voter ID? Card. What do I need to bring with me? What is the criteria for allowing me to get a voter ID card? In order to get a driver's license, one must, must uh, my belief is that a person must provide uh, a bill, for example, an electric bill showing proof of address. If I'm homeless under a bridge, I don't have that. Here's a long list of provided with the statute if you like, and in a similar fashion to what the current requirements for voter registration were, it makes reference to any reasonable documentation. There is a that same kind of latitude in the uh, statutes relative to uh, motor vehicle uh, licenses for the non-driver ID. So. The people at DMV have a lot of latitude in accepting 
whatever is reasonable proof of the person's uh, identity and domicile. It's, it's, it's not limited to a fixed list. There is discretion in law. So, um, according to um, the uh, House Amendment 204H, it says that a person has to, oh yeah, I'm sorry, I read it someplace else, but a person had to, had to um, give their license in the DMV before getting a non-driver's uh, identification. Is that the only thing you No, that, that's only in the specific instance of uh, in a, an older person who's no longer um, able to or desiring to drive. They can turn it in and get a non-driver ID without paying the fee. That's a specific application of what you're referring to there. But that, that has no relevance to the uh, ID issue for voting purposes only. So, um, may I? Sure. Um, what about a student? How can they get it? How can, are they going to have to pay? No, it, it, separately in the bill, there is a, a section that says that authorizes the uh, Secretary of State to pay for the non-driver photo identification for both purposes only to anyone who requires it. So if there's no criteria on age or homelessness or, or um, income test, yeah. nothing at all. Anybody who does not have a photo identification can get one for free and it's paid for by the Secretary of State. It, 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 they get a voucher and they can go and get the free ID and then the DMV is reimbursed by the Secretary of State. There's no cost to somebody who does not have an ID and is availing themselves of the opportunity of this bill presents to get one for free. You're welcome.
I stepped under the bridge last night. I walked downtown and said, get about you. Look we'll at your picture taken. We would be able to find a, a hole in the system that would enable people in mass to uh, go to the Department of Motor Vehicles and get this identification and be able to prove who they are. Okay, it it seems, like, uh, the alternative is to not allow a homeless to vote. Well, that, that wouldn't be... You could, you could write that down on a piece of paper, but it wouldn't stand up to court. I mean, that's why, I'm saying, so why, why, is, why we have that's a procedure. But I'm just wondering why, when we are drawing up who's qualified to be identified, the, the school, when they say you, you go to the school, is okay, because they gave it for some purposes. We went through with the representative Cody. They didn't issue that just because they had a whole bunch of papers lying around so let's just issue them out. They had a reason for it, for issuing it. But for the homeless person, there is no other reason. Uh, nobody knows who he is or anything else. He just showed up one day and said, I'm Joe Thomas and I live on the bank of the That's it. Uh, Representative Webb? Um, I, I'd just like to make a point that as a Justice of the Peace and a notary, when I notarize it in uh, documents, a student ID is not a legal form of ID for notarizing documents. It's usually a government issued ID of some sort of official ID. So the homeless guy, his ID is good. That's, that's an official one. Well, if he gets it from the government, it would be. But he had no proof or anything else. If it's an official ID, it would be. <laughs> my job, eh? <laughs> I don't understand it, but okay, I understand I your answer, but. That's why I've always had a problem with this when we went through it. But I listen to the student being made to problems. I do see people being disenfranchised because of the curriculum. You know, these people don't have, like I said, that electric bill proof for their, their living. Um, they often don't have documents. They're homeless for a reason. Um, so I can say. Any comments? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and uh, I realize that this amendment, I guess, is, has been produced very quickly and, and may have come up with some things, but I think there's a lot of reasons to oppose this, but I want to put on my town moderator hat for just a minute. Um, among other things, the bill says that ballot clerks determine whether somebody's qualified to vote, and as a town moderator, I, I think um, it would be a very serious mistake to authorize ballot clerks to make these decisions. Uh, and, uh, so, I'll just add that to the list of reasons to vote against the amendment. I believe what, the, what is said here, the uh, meaning of it is the language is that if I know you, you're well known in town, I know you. That that's an acceptable person to uh, kind of find who you want. May I just go this way? Line, uh, page one, line 18, talks about the ballot clerk uh, shall inform the voter if he or she is unqualified to vote. Line 20, the voter, if the ballot clerk determines that he or she is qualified. Uh, I have great respect for my ballot clerks, but they should not be making decisions about whether somebody's qualified to vote. A qualification to vote, as we all know in this room, uh, can involve subtle issues and, and uh, uh, involve a fundamental right of people. Uh, and it should not be decided by ballot clerks. It's the role of the town moderator or a ward moderator that goes to say.
creating long lines in a polling place just disenfranchises people. The Secretary of State's uh, testimony, or the Deputy Secretary of State's testimony was that it had the possibility of disenfranchising voters. And I think that's what this, this bill does. So I think a reasonable photo ID requirement should be acceptable and that this committee unanimously adopted the subcommittee's amendment on 356. This is not 356. because this, this, this phrase disenfranchised gets battered about thrown around and, and, it, and it really does uh, uh, get me in a little bit of a tense state because from what I'm reading, Representative Smith, everything I'm reading in this bill, no matter if somebody comes in, whether they're homeless or a student that don't, does not have the proper ID, no matter what, they're going to get to vote that day. My question to Representative Pierce is, are you saying that because of an assumption that there might be long delays, that there'll be a large line and somebody might not get in before the closing of the polls? I was quoting the Deputy Secretary of State's testimony in 1301, saying that long lines created in the polling place and the possibility of creating, uh, or the possibility, creating the possibility of disenfranchising voters. Um, I don't recall specifically if it was about timing of not getting in. I doubt it because there's a statute that says if you're in line at the time of the closing polls, you're not in. Um, I think it was, and my recollection was that a voter drives up to the polling place, these lines coming out the door, they're just not going to, you know, it's a possibility, uh, so they're just not going to vote. Is it your view? Uh, yes. It seems to me that that is very much of a possibility some losing patience with it and he's disenfranchised by his own volition. Mm -hmm. Not that I not that mm -hmm. he craved the work. Right. So I, think, I think I think this testimony, I mean if you want to ask him to recreate that testimony, but I think the testimony was that creating procedures in the election laws that increase the risk of that happening has the possibility of creating, or creates the possibility of disenfranchising voters, possibly disenfranchising voters. Is there any further discussion? Any other? Okay, moving 
exhausted this for uh, <laughs> question from the roll. Can I make a comment you, before we have a vote? I'd just like to say on this bill, there's some people who have been studying this for many, many months, uh, going back to the fall when the House had its own version of the bill, all the way through until it came uh, in April. People have been here and going through lots and lots of research, lots of heard from witnesses. And I see today, and we're coming down to probably one of the most uh, important bills that will come out of this committee, that 40% of the people who have been voting on this have not been a part of this committee, nor have they heard this testimony. Uh, I'm just disappointed that the time came to the last minute. We have a time limit, I think it's 3 o'clock or whatever the time is. These could have been done earlier and we could have heard all these things. And now we are going to get this through, uh, what's and all. The 40% seems like an awful lot of people, who, a lot high percentage to vote on something that people haven't heard the testimony and done the research on. I'm sure you're disappointed that the committee members are not able to attend their... No, I'm disappointed in the fact that how this was pushed to the very end. It was pushed to just a half hour before, uh, hours before it was there. We had this uh, earlier. We came in uh, early in the middle of April anyway. It was time we kept that postponed and getting together and having these meetings. And it came down to the wire. I'm just disappointed that it had to be this way. Plus the fact that... We could have had our own bill in January, 356. Was You're not talking about three. No, you asked me a question. I'm giving you no, I didn't ask you a question at all. I made a statement that I share your disappointment that the committee members were not available to be here today. Before. You're putting words in my mouth. Those are your words, sir. That's what but I Don't speak for me. Represent Thomas is spent. Okay. We're going to have to vote on this bill now. I understand that. Okay. I have a right to make my comment on it. And you've done that. Okay. okay. What's your point? My point is we need to stop the right thing. You can't do with me, but that's it. It's in. This is the OTP on amendment 2012. This is adoption of the amendment uh, 21698. Representative Scala? Yes. Representative Fisco? No. Representative Holmes? No. Representative Smith? Yes. Representative Delanus? Yes. Representative Erickson? Yes. Representative Riley? Yes. Representative Thomas? Yes. Representative Cody? No. Representative Pierce? No. Representative Genus? No. Representative Bone? Yes. Representative Webb? Yes. Representative uh, Villeneuve? Yes. Representative Souza? Yes. Representative Silva? Yes. Representative Fields? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm going to vote yes and I'm, because I am aware of this for a long time and been in how long enough to know what you want to do with that. So I will vote yes. Representative Deloge? No. And Representative Richardson? No. And Representative Bates? Yes. Thirteen yeas and seven days. The motion carries. I think it's headed at recess. And uh, we'll take up the vote on hot and pass as amended.